Ian. <laughs> what? Yo! What does that mean, bro? Even Schumer. Okay, the P word. I'm no longer. I'm no longer censoring myself. I'm saying it. It's not the P word. And here is part four of my interview with former President Donald Trump. Take a look. Let me ask you this. Um, Wall Street Journal, big article. Democrats are worried. You keep reading. Democrats are in a state of panic. Democrats are in a state of panic. And now something that we have covered at length on this program, and that is Joe Biden's cognitive decline. Now Democrats are saying it, and they're saying it out loud. Take a look. <laughs> I've been a senator since I was 29 years old. Never left government. In the fall, he had tied that fall. He decided to... Uh, look, I shouldn't get into this problem. Never forget, America is the strongest when we lead, not only by our nice. example of our power, but by the power of our example. You can clap for that. As President Lincoln said, <laughs> we'll never forget <laughs> lying around. Bro, these compies are pretty funny. Like, they, they really cook his ass, bro. <laughs> it's crazy how they cook his ass like this. That's him, him lying around, actually. They're trying to erase black history. We're going to write black history because it's American history. On Memorial Day, I proudly stood with a black man. Just checking this afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon. Will not bring Israel and will not bring down, bog down, will only bog down Israel and Gaza. What's your response to that, sir? Is Steny here? Where's Steny Hoyer? Steny Hoyer. I hear him in the back. He's drinking, the, he's over by the beer. Yeah. <laughs> well, Steny Hoyer lives on the western shore of Delaware in Maryland. The thing about, I'm just, let me put it this way. I remember when I was vice president and things weren't going too well. I inherited economies on the brink. Now our economy is literally the envy of the world. Too many corporations raise prices to pad their profits, charging more and more for less and less. That's why it's cracking down on corporations that engage in price gouging and deceptive pricing. Wall Street didn't build America. They're not bad guys. They didn't build it, though. The middle class built the country, and unions built the middle class. Wages keep going up. Inflation keeps coming down. Inflation has dropped from 9 percent to 3 percent, the lowest in the world, and tending lower. So most days, you see Joe struggling. Now Democrats are saying it. But State of the Union, we saw a very different, in my view, Joe. Maybe, maybe just Red Bull. I don't know. I'm not going to make any allegations, but it certainly was not the normal Biden. How significant an issue is this? Look, we are... Because I don't think he could sit here and have this conversation. Right. We're at the most dangerous point in the history of our country because of the power of weaponry, nuclear weapons in particular, weapons that are so powerful uh, that... Uh, and I've seen the effects. And uh, I had an uncle, a great professor at MIT for many years. We used to talk about nuclear a lot. He understood nuclear very well. And even then, that was many years the ago. My father's brother, Dr. <laughs> John Trump. And I think he was the longest serving uh, professor in the history of MIT. I think 41 years, very smart. We used to talk about nuclear. And he used to talk about the power of nuclear. And I'd say, Uncle John, you're not. We're a briefcase the size of a regular briefcase would, would do damage to the I don't even want to discuss. And he doesn't we're a long even want to discuss that in terms it. of the advancement of that technology. And it's very bad, very scary. And I will tell you, uh, we have a chance of going into World War III because of our leader. So I don't want to get into what state he's in. You know, it's, 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 in one way, it's not something for me to talk about. I can tell you this uh, President Xi of China, Putin, Kim Jong un, all of these leaders are at the top of their game, mentally. They're at the top of their game. And they're dealing with somebody that's not at the top of their, his game. And honestly, he never was. He was never the brightest bulb. And everybody understands that. Everybody knows that. You look at his foreign policy over the years. I think he's not wrong when he says Biden was never the brightest bulb. But it is pretty funny that he's the one saying it. 
Because it's like, if there's one guy who is objectively just as bad, if not worse, like it's Donald Trump. Like, it's just so funny for him to be like, he's not the bribe is bold. I am. Because it was always wrong. You look at all of the things, you look at his crime bill in the 1990s, how, how horrible that was to certain groups of people. He was never great at what he did. He did it because he was hale and hearty and well met. And I have a real problem. I love this country. I don't want to see this country get into a nuclear war and be so badly damaged. What we say won't matter. This won't matter. This place won't matter. Nothing will matter because practically nothing's going to be here anymore. The level of power, the level of, of power with the weapons and the weaponry, that's real weaponry. That's worse than the weaponry that we were talking about a little while ago. This is the ultimate. This is obliteration, maybe world obliteration. And we have a man that is not capable of even discussing it. He talked the other night about uh, that nuclear doesn't matter so much. What matters is, think of this, global warming. The only global warming that matters to me is nuclear global warming, because that's the <laughs> real deal. He said it's oh come on bro yeah global warming doesn't matter because i'm scared of a nuclear holocaust is crazy i mean the the fears of a nuclear holocaust is definitely becoming more real by the moment it's just that you know these two don't need to be conflicting interests okay the notion that like you can be fearful of one and not the other is is really dumb an existential threat he loves the words yeah record-breaking summer last year looking to be the record-breaking summer this year too oh yeah this was the hottest recorded, uh, May was the hottest recorded month consistently. So it's great. Existential threat. That global warming is an existential threat. Hassan Abi's like, yes, climate change, tax the people, more hell yeah, we make a difference. Wait, what? What are you saying? I didn't say any of those things. You just made up an entire different framework and got mad about it yesterday chat was like damn he used doom nuclear war today chat is like nuclear war lule it's not happening the lulu lule bro is literally what is happening <laughs> bro is just envisioning a chat and a streamer for all for himself and typing to that chat and streamer in the chat admitting to hate watching two consecutive days in a row is crazy i mean this guy's been following since 2020, so I don't think it's just been two consecutive days in a row of hate watching. This is my favorite type of, this is my favorite type of chatter though. It is my favorite type of conservative in general. Is not one that like gets mad at the things that are coming out of your mouth. It's one that just basically envisions what you are saying and then get mad, gets mad at this hypothetical that they've cultivated in their mind. It's like, bro, you're not mad at me. You're mad at your own imagination. This is what I like to call the the girlfriend chatter. You know what I mean? Like, oh, uh, I saw in a dream that you cheated on me and now it's your problem. It's like, no, you dreamt it. Okay. Like, what do you mean? You just, you're just making up a guy and getting mad at that guy and saying, I'm that guy. It's like, you made up the guy. It's funny that you think this person is a conservative when this is currently the average median American liberal. Nah, that's a conservative most like well first of all the average median american liberal is a conservative but uh that guy is probably a trump supporter in general because he's like mad about us making fun of trump and he doesn't know why what is it it's weather and i'm i'm all for that you know what i'm in, in a certain way in a very powerful way i'm an environmentalist i'm i'm all i want clean air i want clean water but this is not the existential threat Tomorrow, we could have a war that will be so devastating that you could never recover from it. Nobody can. The whole world won't be able to recover from it. And he's talking about something in 400 years from now, the, the oceans will rise by an eighth of an inch. Look, we have a man that shouldn't be doing this job. He's not qualified. He's not mentally sharp enough. And I don't believe he was 20 years ago either. You know, they can show me clips. Take a look. Wait. Powerful way. I'm an environmentalist. I'm, I'm all, I want clean air. I want clean water. Uh, but this is not the existential threat. I'm an environmentalist. Tomorrow. Bro, his, his EPA deregulations were so severe that even carbon polluters were like, dude, the gases that we're releasing in the form and, uh, and, and not engaging in like fracking the, the normal carbon, co carbon capture measures that we previously had in the process of fracking are so bad 
that like GE and other like fossil fuel industry back Titans had to come out and be like, we have to do something about the lack of regulation in this field under the Trump administration, under the Trump administration, the EPA deregulation was so severe were so severe that even other fossil fuel backed industries had to come out and be like, we have to do something about this. Like it's getting to a point where maybe it's a little scary. We could have a war that will be so devastating that you could never recover from it. Nobody can. The whole world won't be able to recover from it. And he's talking about something in 400 years from now, the, the oceans will rise by an eighth of an inch. Look, we have a man that shouldn't be doing this job. He's not qualified. He's not mentally sharp enough. And I don't believe he was 20 years ago either. You know, they can show me clips. Take a look at the clips of he, how he did 20 years ago. He's, He's also the number one anti-renewables guy. He thinks electric vehicles are gay and hates them. He personally thinks windmills are ugly. And therefore, he hates windmills and will say, like, they kill birds. They're killing birds. It's a birdicide, folks. We can't have these windmills. He's even gone so far as to say wind turbines cause cancer and all, uh, any number of different insane shit. Like, he's out of his mind, dude. Like, it is the one area where Joe Biden, al albeit not the environmental champion himself, uh, his administration is lacking in many areas on that front, too, is still seen as like a Greenpeace activist, okay? Donald Trump is so bad when it comes to the environment, so objectively bad that Joe Biden is basically a Greenpeace guy, okay? In comparison, it is the one area where there's no question who is like not even marginally better, like significantly better. Right off the bat, just having an EPA in general automatically puts you like as a federal as a as a federal agency having the epa have all of its appointments uh, and and have like competent people working there instead of like a polluter billionaire that he put there to just specifically gut it puts biden in uh the the positive category on that front his level of hatred for me is incredible but all i'm trying to do is lay out the facts lay out the facts we have to have somebody that's sharp and strong. And Viktor Orban, who's a very strong kind of a guy, I guess. They call him a strong man. Oh, Trump likes, I don't like strong men or hate strong men. He's leading a country. He's a strong leader. He's the prime minister of Hungary. He said the only way we're going to solve the problems of the world, you got to bring Trump back. China was afraid of him. Russia was afraid of him. Look, I ended the Russian... China was afraid of Viktor Orban? Russia was afraid of Viktor Orban? These are two countries that Viktor Orban is literally directly at odds with the European Union over. What the f is he saying? Oh, he means himself. Okay. I thought he was still talking about, he said he, so I, I assumed he wasn't talking about himself in the third person. Okay. My bad. I, I misunderstood. It's like he's serving three minute ad breaks at the top of the hour, folks. Everyone is afraid of it. They shouldn't be. They shouldn't be. He's serving the three minute ad breaks, but he's also telling you that if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free folks. That's right. Twitch prime. Many people, many people have Amazon prime accounts. They can connect it to their Twitch accounts, but they don't, but they don't, they could. And then there's the gift. There's George Soros gifting five gifted subs allowing five people to no longer be afraid of the top of the hour pipeline Nord Stream 2 before i came in even you nobody ever heard of Nord Stream 2 i said <laughs> they're building Nord Stream 2 everyone said what is that it's the biggest pipeline in the world going to germany so we're protecting germany and germany's paying billions of dollars nobody ever heard of Nord Stream 2 before me was a month to russia for energy and I also said it's bad for Germany because if they ever do end up with a war, which they have many times, they'll turn off the juice and Germany doesn't have a chance. That's when I gave Angela Merkel a white flag. You remember I sent mm -hmm. over a white flag at a table. She said, what is it? That's the flag of surrender. So uh, we need a president that's sharp and that's respected. And we're closer to World War III. Now you Lily the Chaos God. Step up 69, Miss Susie B, many different names.
but it's all the same name. George Soros. You take a look at what's happened in the last few days. Putin is now talking about nuclear weapons for the first time. Really. I mean, he's talking about them all the time because Ukraine is now talking about uh, hitting Russia. And Biden doesn't know what the hell to say. But all of these things, they're going to end up leading to World War III. Absolutely. I'll get the Ukrainian situation settled, and I'll get it settled fast. It would have never happened. The other thing that would have never happened is the October 7th attack of Israel. Would have never happened. And you know what else? I'll add something else that won't, wouldn't have happened. Inflation. We have the worst inflation maybe in the history of our country. Far worse than they report. There's one Because when you add interest rates when and when you add energy prices, look at the energy. By the way, gasoline prices are going way up again. When you add all of this in, I think it's the worst inflation we've ever had. And Let our, stay country, our on country has become, Sean, a failing nation. You say declining nation. I say declining or failing. Yeah, failing. So let me go back to the foreign policy. I say policy. a lot of things about it, but yeah. it's whatever I say about I it, want to it's talk real more bad. About that. I, but let uh -huh. me stay focused for just a second, if I may, on the issue of we have war in Europe, we have war in the Middle East. Um, and we have the Iranians, according to reports, even the IAEA, may be very close to nuclear weapons. Very close. That should scare everybody. Yep. Yeah, how'd that happen, bro? How'd that happen? How did that happen? How? No, actually, how? Who caused it? Who could be responsible? One of the two people in this room is directly responsible. <laughs> I wonder who that guy is. Is it Sean Hannity, who doesn't even burp in the microphone, apparently? And therefore is better than me as a broadcaster, according to some? I just, I can't seem to put my finger on who destroyed... The signature foreign policy achievement of the previous administration, the Obama, Obama administration. They're crazy enough that I think they would, they would use them. And <laughs> there's nothing funnier than being like Iran. They're crazy, man. They'll definitely use their nukes. Meanwhile, we're talking about Russia. We're talking about Israel, which also has nukes. Okay. Like. The only nation that's crazy enough to use nukes on a civilian population is us, mother. We're the only ones who used it. So what do you mean? Oh, the, everyone else is crazy enough to use it. Serious situation. More dangerous, I think, than at Most any point. Most dangerous time in the history of our country. I would agree. And so my question to you is, you, if you are elected and you are the next president, the 47th president, how do you begin the process of restoring world order? Now, one other thing. I never thought in my lifetime I would listen to a president. I know we hate Trump, but isn't he right about the fact that he's more mentally capable of handling World War III than Biden is? No. <laughs> like, just because he, he has more of his mental faculties in order in comparison to Biden, which is not a very high bar to clear, doesn't mean that he's going to handle World War III in a better way. The shit that he's saying that he is saying as far as October 7 is hilarious because October 7 is like is Donald Trump okay his administration's actions and I've said this so many times uh and I I guess I have to repeat it his administration's actions as far as like it's dealing with Israel is directly responsible for October 7 like directly okay just like the Iran nuclearization he is directly responsible for it. You couldn't be more wrong on that. I already ran the top of the hour ad break, okay? Oh, it's because Arabs are predisposed to hate Jews genetically. Yeah. Of our country, the leader of the free world, you know, literally tell... A Shut down the CIA. Yes, he's more capable, bro. Wait, what? Dude, that's crazy. It's not like the CIA is more competent now under the Biden regime anyway. The CIA's decline is, is just... A byproduct, I think, of everything being outsourced. Country that was attacked by radical Islamic terrorists that uh, will support the, your defense, but we won't support you fighting back after the Iranians fired weapons into their country. Right. Um, to me, that was a surrender in the war on terror. We're trying to lecture Israel. Oh, you can't go to Rafa. You can't do this. Okay, excuse me, well, how would we act if we lost what would be, by population, extrapolated out 40,000 Americans in a day? So, Dude, I love how one of the, I mean, the Israel stuff since October 7 has been devastating, 
but it has been pretty revealing because like so many of these like edgy accounts that love Donald Trump, so many of these like edgy accounts on Twitter, for example, were still unconditional dick riders of Israel with the exception of like some of the Nazis like Nick Fuentes who just like hate Israel because they hate Jews that like they kept trying to be edgy while defending Israel and it just doesn't work. And it's the same for these guys. These guys are like America first, America first. Meanwhile, it seems it seems people being like, oh, actually, uh, Israel first. America is is uh, maybe second. Who knows? Uh, how how dare Biden uh, even remotely criticize Israel? Ridiculous. So number one, they have to finish the job. Israel has to finish that job. They have to finish it quickly, strongly, and they have to get back to life again because it's taking too long. They have to finish the job. You're saying go in, win, and finish. You gotta win. You gotta win. Huh. Interesting. I thought he told Habib that he was going to fucking, he was going to end it. The attack on October 7th, and it's getting more and more demeaned. They're demeaning it. I have people now telling me they don't think the attack ever happened. <sighs> and take a look. <sighs> you watch the news reports. I have the where 50 people minutes that are of protesting. video. Sure, I know you're doing so do I. But here's the thing. You watch these people on television, and then just like you have Holocaust deniers also. Bro, there's no day. There is literally no difference between him and Biden on this. Okay. Which, by the way, is significantly worse for Biden, in my opinion, because the expectation is that Trump is going to be this fascist asshole. So the fact that so the fact that uh, him and Brandon are completely aligned on this issue is, is insane, like absolutely insane. They're so aligned on this issue. They're so aligned on this issue that they're having a hard time being like, what would you do different than Biden? What would you do different than Biden in this situation? I wouldn't lie. I wouldn't get mad at Israel ever. I would say you're doing great. Go forward into Rafa. Okay, Brandon on accident was like, we'll do a red line. He hasn't necessarily actually enforced the red line. So fundamentally, there is no difference. They say the Holocaust never took. It's the exact same people. They're saying it never happened. AOC plus three. Who? What? They're, oh my god, he's so woke. He's saying AOC plus the are Holocaust deniers. Bro's gonna lose out on his base if he keeps chirping like this, okay? <laughs> he's about to lose. He's about to lose out on his base if he keeps chirping like this about the Holocaust. <laughs> AOC plus, plus three. They deny the Holocaust. They deny. They deny October 7. Oh yeah, I love this one. <laughs> I'll write the theory and I'll do the praxis. He already is, lol. I'll read the replies. Uh, did we just lose? I'm on the fence with my vote for Trump. I might stay home. I'm so sick of this Israel first bullshit. It's amazing how literally not a single word he said. Michigander Groiper. It's amazing how literally not a single word he said was America first in the slightest. This is so sad. Oh man, didn't know the rhetoric was this bad. This is why I'm an uncommitted voter, says classic groip. America first, Christ is king. Why does this guy follow me? All the alcoholic dads who speak like, who say stuff like friend. Yeah, hate watcher, 100%. Great website, Elon. Things are going great. <laughs> uh, this is great. America first post. I didn't even know this was an... Are these real comments going on? Uh, hello, this is Twitter. Of course, these are real comments. You know, Israel was the most powerful lobby in the country 15 years ago. Today, between Tlaib and AOC and all of these people, what they're doing. Wait, what? Is he saying it's bad that the Israeli lobby is no longer as powerful? Which, by the way, it doesn't even, it's still a pretty consequential lobby. Uh, Israel, they don't have the backing that they once had. You'll give it to them. Yeah, I have the, I'm good. I'm good. But they don't. Wait, what? Wait, wait, whoa, 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 wait. 15 years ago. Today, between Tlaib and AOC and all of these people, what they're doing, uh, Israel, they don't have the backing that they once had. You'll give it to them. Yeah, I have the, I'm good. I'm good. But they don't have the backing. Even Schumer has become like a Palestinian. <laughs> what? Yo! What does that mean, bro? Even Schumer has become like a Palestinian. And that's a bad word, okay? A P word. I'm no longer, I'm no longer 
censoring myself i'm saying it it's not the p word i will put back apac and restore it to its former glory i will make sure that israel has the most powerful lobby in america once again <laughs> yeah i have it on good authority chuck schumer said the shahada i think he just means like schumer has become hamas but he doesn't know hamas so he just says palestinian because he's that ride or die for Zionism. That in his in his mind, it's like Hamas, Palestine, same thing. Chuck Schumer, Jewish, always strong for Israel. He's become like a Palestinian. He called for elections in the middle of a war. Yeah, it's uh, it's a very bad thing. It's a very sad thing, and it's a very dangerous thing. But if you look, so many people I watch on your show. I'm not even joking when I say this conversation. Like even slight criticism of Israel would cause such a rupture in the mother Trump camp, like unimaginable rupture, both the groipers and the actual anti-Semites uh, who personally hate Jews and hate Israel for that reason, all the way down to like the average MAGA conservative who maybe has like a little bit of anti-Semitism, but like doesn't really understand the situation at all, but thinks it's like kind of wild that we're giving so many tax dollars to Israel. Like if Democrats turned around and were like, what are we doing here? What's going on? What's going on here? What, what's happening? We should maybe uh, dial this back, the, this Israel support, this unconditional support to Israel back a little bit. And then Trump and the MAGA train would turn around and be like, no, we love Israel. How dare you? How dare you criticize Israel? I'm Israel high folks. They'd be chirping like that. You could so easily exploit that, that like obvious contradiction. You could just be like, what do you mean? I thought you said America first. What's happening here? What's that about? Still relevant? No. May Allah awaken the people and help them to see the evil doings of Israel and the United States. Ha! My favorite video. I'm afraid I think people think that this is like he said this unironically or something. Where they're going in, in the middle of a war. For Israel, Wait. He's become like a Palestinian. Chuck Schumer, Jewish, always strong for Israel. He's become like a Palestinian. He called for elections in the middle of a war. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a very bad thing. It's a very sad thing. And it's a very dangerous thing. But if you look, so many people, I watch on your show where they're going and interviewing these people that are protesting just recently at Columbia and the different places. They say, we don't believe October 7th ever happened. And <laughs> this is such a funny thing to lie about. No, he's not saying strong for a Jew. He's saying Chuck Schumer is Jewish and has always been a strong supporter of Israel. I don't think anyone says October 7th didn't happen. He should, he should instead be saying like, people are celebrating October 7th folks. That's what he should be saying. Even that is like super marginal, but who cares? I don't think I've ever seen a person who doesn't believe that October 7 happened. I'm not, I'm not even like, it's too early for October 7 denial. You know what I mean? Maybe like 10 years down the line. Okay. With the, with the way that like mania works, let's say five years down the line, Before, back in the day, it used to take 10 years for people to start denying that it ever happened at all. But like, I have not seen, we're too close to October 7 for there to be October 7 deniers. They may believe that, you know, they may actually believe that happened recently at Columbia and the different places. They say, we don't believe October 7th ever happened. Is that what they're saying? Is that what they're saying at Columbia and other places? We don't believe that October 7 happened. October 7 never happened is what they're saying, folks. There are no hostages in Gaza. And... They may believe that, you know, they may actually believe that, but they have to get the job done. They have to get in there and they have to get it done. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, Colombian students were dancing in their dorm rooftops on October 7th. We just have breaking news, as I mentioned in my open tonight, and I want to get your reaction to the fact that the appeals court has now stopped your Georgia case, election case, while appeal on Willis's disqualification is pending. This is on the heels of... I'm so mad. I'm so mad about this. Boo. Boo. Florida judge Eileen Cannon looking into whether or not uh, the prosecutor, Jack Smith, the special prosecutor uh, was pointed in an inappropriate way, which would render the case and the indictments out completely. That is that is going to take place in fairly short order. 
a lot can change in, in a couple of days with only 152 days out of an election. And what we call him deranged Jack Smith, because you look at his career, he's been overturned by the Supreme Court unanimously, so many other things. Uh, he goes too far. Let me ask you this. You had said something um, during the trial in New York. Mother Teresa couldn't beat these charges was yeah. one thing that you said, and you turned out to be right. Uh, and secondly, you, you were asked about the possibility mm -hmm. that Judge Marchand might send you to jail. You said something that really kind of got my attention. What did you say that it didn't phase you in the sense that if that's what it takes? You don't have to be doing this. You could be playing golf every day and you probably wouldn't be charged with anything. That's not true. I would say that a big part of the consideration for Trump running again was because of the possible, possible criminal elements, okay? Like, no, this is very similar to Benjamin Netanyahu in many ways, okay? It was definitely one of those things where he was like, I'm so f cooked. Well, I think I say it about almost all of these cases that are brought against me. They are doing it for the purposes of hurting a political opponent of Biden and trying to get him to win, and he's the worst president in the history of our country. I was thinking it. This reminds me of so much of what you'd hear from Bibis in Israel. Yes. Also, please tell me, that you're an Israeli chatter with the name Jank 2028? I don't know, probably not, but that would be... Yes, I am an Israeli chatter. Oh my God, we did it. It's global. It's global. Jank 2028 is global. We've done it, folks. We've done it! <laughs> yes! It's universal. It's officially universal. Oh, that makes me so happy. Don't care. Voting Jank. <laughs> uh, the new Jank order. <laughs> uh, one united front for Jank. But in the case that you're talking about, I said very strongly that uh, I'm very proud to fight for our Constitution. And if that's what it takes, uh, everybody said, this is such a minor thing. You don't go to jail for this, all of them. But you don't understand what we're dealing against, Sean. We're dealing against these, a system that is so corrupt Nobody's ever seen anything like it. I did nothing wrong in any of these things. <laughs> I've done nothing wrong. The only thing I've done wrong is I've loved my country too much. I fought the deep state too much, folks. That's what happened. I did nothing wrong. We did nothing wrong at all. And you know, uh, here's another parallel. Here's another parallel to Benjamin Netanyahu. Aside from all of the right wing fascism, cult of personality nonsense. Benjamin Netanyahu, for all of his failures and all of his corruption, is also indicted on the silliest charges possible, which is like, you know, uh, collaborating with, like, newspapers and shit. Hilarious. Donald Trump has done a metric ton of evil and awful corrupt things. Only indicted technically for his relationship with the National Enquirer. It's the same. It is literally the same, dude. Think about it. The hush money shit was like National Enquirer. It's great. When you look at the analysts, whether it's uh, Greg Jarrett or Andy McCarthy or uh, Jonathan Turley or your friend, the great one, Mark Levin, mm -hmm. uh, Dershowitz. The great them, one. They said, there's yeah. no case here. Judge Janine was so incredible two weeks ago. She was unbelievable. Angry. She was angry. And you know why they're angry? Because they love our country and they see what's happening. It's totally unconstitutional what they've done. And if you look at the statements made by the people I just mentioned, and I'm not friends with any, I mean, they, I think they respect what I've done. They might respect me. They might not respect me. But they said there's no case. It shouldn't have been brought. And the way the judge charged the jury, told the jury, gave jury instructions, nobody's ever heard anything like that. It was basically, when you break it down, a records-keeping issue on a misdemeanor whose statute of limitations had run out, that they upcharged into a felony on a federal election, and that raises another issue of appeal. What will be your and By the way, when you say uh, records-keeping, you know what the record-keeping was? They charged an election, if, if you look, a, a lawyer's fee. Yeah. A legal fee. And you call it a legal expense. It's known. You call a legal fee a legal expense. The bookkeeper, who I never spoke to, correctly wrote a legal expense for a lawyer that was paid. We have a similar case. Hillary Clinton funneled money to a law firm. 
And that law firm hired an op research firm. And that op research firm hired a guy by Christopher Steele. Yes! That became the basis of what I described as the Steele dossier, folks. They said there's a piss tape. There's no piss tape, believe me. Russia, Russia, Russia. The dirty Russian misinformation dossier that became the basis of not one but four FISA applications. And it all turned out not to be true. Um, so in that case, um, well, nobody was charged. Nobody was charged with top secret classified information. Their, her home wasn't raided on her server. T deleted subpoenaed emails, 30,000 of them. We didn't hear a bleach bit. Then you have all the people that signed off on those warrants. Nothing happens to them. Joe Biden, four locations. Dude, there's so much lore that you have to immediately be able to deploy at any given moment. Okay, one of them is very silly. It has to do with briber using champagne bottles and cigars and shit. But the media ones are actually pretty crazy. We basically got a full picture of WhatsApp text, recorded calls, and all of how capitalist media interacts with power. BB made the owners of Walla billions in return. They ran an insane North Korea S pro BB operation. In fact, BB's nickname in Walla was literally Kim. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I feel like all things considered, you should be going to jail for way worse shit. Like being a war criminal. Oh, missile crisis 2.0 incoming? Yeah. Breaking news, CBS reports that four Russian warships will arrive in Havana, Cuba next week. Hell yeah. It's Joe over. Let's go. Let's go. Nation's top secret documents. Nobody raided his house. That, I guess we've come, we, we've added a new word to our lexicon. And that is lawfare. Yeah. Or weaponization of justice. That's right. My question to you is, and people are saying. What were you saying about us Europeans getting nuked? Okay, well, I spoke too soon. And as is the case with Russia stuff, whenever I say something, the exact opposite happens. So I saved you guys. Thank you, EU. Uh, I mean, you're welcome, Europeans. I saved you. We are the ones... Well, I won't say it. I won't say it now because the opposite will happen. I was unaware that Cuba and Russia were still a lot allied, especially given Russia's anti-communist leadership. What is this about? I mean, it's not done on ideological boundaries. I think it's just like a, an opposition to American imperialism. Actually, because of an interview we did together, you said I would be dictator for the day and just to secure the border and, and drill for oil. I thought it was tongue in cheek. I was sitting there with you. However, Say the opposite instead? Nah, I'm saving the EU by destroying America. I'm not saying it. My question is a very serious one. You know, people are claiming you want retribution. People are claiming you want what has happened to you done to Democrats. Would you do that ever? Look, what's happened to me has never happened in this country before. And it has to stop because... Wait a minute. It, I want to hear that again. It has to stop. Well, it does have to stop because we're not going to have a country. And if you're elected, what does that mean? Define that. Look, what I've gone through, nobody's ever gone through. Uh, I'm a very legitimate person. I built a great business. Everything's been, I have been under siege. Nobody's ever seen anything like this in this country. Now, in other countries, in other third world countries, or banana republics, as, as they say, a banana republic. Bro literally said he'd be dictator for a day. What are we talking about? What do you mean he wants to stop it? Also, he ran on lock her up. It's not our fault that he's lame as hell and didn't actually follow through on the promise of jailing Hillary Clinton. So every time they bring up the Clinton sh every time they bring up the Clinton shit, it's just an L for him. He said he's going to get Hillary Clinton arrested. Apparently, there were subsequent investigations that showed so much wrongdoing and this dumb couldn't even arrest her. Imagine how much cooler it would be if Hillary Clinton was jailed. It would have been awesome. Look, we've become a banana republic. At the border, we've become a banana republic. With so many other elements of our country, we've become a banana republic. You take a look at what's happening with inflation. That's a banana republic inflation, what we have. I think it could be as high as 50% if you add everything in. When you start adding uh, energy prices in, when you start adding interest rates, which have gone from 2% to, to 9 and 10%. He looks like his face is melting off trying to fight it by leaning like an ice cream cone. Yeah, I think it's Ozempic. He has lost a lot of weight and kind of looks like shit, honestly. He's like sweating all the time. His hair looks like dog. Very disrespectful, folks. And for focus on those that want people to believe that you want retribution. 
that you will use the system of justice to go yeah. after your political so, enemies. So, number one, they're wrong. It has to stop, because otherwise we're not going to have a country. Look, when this election is over, based on what they've done, I would have every right to go after them. And it's easy, because it's Joe Biden. And you see all the criminality, all of the money that's going into the family and him, all of this money from China, from Russia, from Ukraine. During one of the interviews, I said, what about the three and a half million dollars paid to the Biden family from the mayor of Moscow's wife? What about that? And Russian Chris Wallace Oliver. defended him, said, you can't ask that question. Well, then it turned out to be a big deal long after that debate. That was one of the debates. And it turned out to be a big deal. And Chris Wallace said, we can't go there because we don't know that it should turn out to be true. Millions and millions of dollars. Now, he, way, if we're going to do dinner that, with her if, at the Cafe Milano, and he said correct. to America he never once talked to his son, brother, or anybody about their foreign business deal. Well, he said it, and then you found out it was absolutely untrue. Everything he says is untrue. There's never been a president like this. Look, he is a horrible president. He's destroying our country at the border. He's allowing millions of people to come in from prisons and jails, from mental institutions and insane asylums, which is a step above, a big step above a mental institution. He's allowing terrorists to flood into our country. And the numbers are probably 16, 17, or 18 million people. You're going to have over 20 million people, I think, I believe, and a lot what? of other people do, too, by the time he hopefully gets out. November 5th, Election Day, will be the most... And by the way, it starts on September 22nd. It starts earlier because of early voting. But November 5th will go down... As Damn, bro. My man is, like, talking about early voting and shit. That's got to be desperation. Because if you recall, in 2020, he was like, don't participate in mail-in ballots. Now he's talking about early voting and shit. Yo, dumbass realized perhaps they on the, the institutions, specifically talking about how the election is rigged leading up to the election, actually depressed voter turnout is the most important election in the history yeah he's about to he's about to start talking about like mail-in ballot registration it should be universal <laughs> of our country it's going to be the most important day and period in the history of our country will you pledge to restore equal justice equal application of our laws and this practice of weaponization is that a promise you're going to make you have to do it but it's awful. Yeah, it is funny that Hannity is like, come on, you're not going to be a dictator. Say it. Say you're not going to be a dictator. You're not going to be a dictator, right? Come on, just say it. Just please. Like, not that he gives a shit if Trump's a dictator or not. He's just like, he recognizes that that is uh, definitely off-putting to a lot of people in the margins that may vote for him otherwise. And he's just like, please. Just come on, come on, come on. Dispel the rumors that you're going to be a dictator for the day like you said you would. Come on. You're scaring the hose. Look, I know you want me to say something. No, so I don't nice, want you to say I'm but asking. But I don't want to look naive. I don't want What to. they've done to the Republican Party, they want to arrest on no crime. They want to arrest the person that won the nomination in a landslide. There was nobody even close in a landslide. The person that got millions of votes, more votes than any other sitting president in history in the last election. The person that won an election that he wasn't expected to win against Hillary Clinton in 2016, they want to arrest that person on no crime. They want to arrest... There was no crime. There was no criminality. There was no crime. And you can go back to all of these legal scholars. They can't believe what's happening. Some of them don't even like me, and they're saying, this is a very, very dangerous thing that's happening. No, we can't let this happen, and I will do everything in my power not to let. But there's tremendous criminality here. What they're doing to me, if, if it's going to continue, we're really not going to have much of a country left. It's really, it is weaponization. You call it lawfare, you call it, some people call it just warfare. But it is weaponization of the election. And we're talking about... I think the most important election in the history of our country. This will go down, I believe, as the most important election in the history of our country. We can't have this stuff go on. Oh, because God. You know what? When Biden goes. 
Oh, happy birthday to me, dude. Israel's Netanyahu said to address U.S. Congress on July 24th, AP source says. Dude, the real birthday present would be if he gets arrested on my birthday. Totally unrelated to what you're currently talking about, but seeing people talk about Hamas rejecting the ceasefire proposal that Israel already said they wouldn't accept under any circumstances, making me feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Yeah, because people are stupid, okay? And at a certain point, you have to understand that people are just stupid and they want to be smart. They want to seem smart. And what do they do in an effort to seem smart? They just repeat whatever they hear in the news. Okay. They oftentimes just read the headline and, and, and repeat it. Now the issue is, uh, the headline oftentimes does not give you the clearer picture of the story. Um, and the reality is that, uh, this has been a concerted effort by the Biden administration to build a narrative that it's actually not Israel. Uh, that is spoiling their own supposed ceasefire agreement. It's actually Hamas that is spoiling it. So that's the situation. That's why people are repeating that shit. Goes out, everyone says bye bye, and then he gets indicted. It's a good thing you only read the headline then. Yeah. Famously, I only read the headline. I never actually have like people in Israel, Knesset members, actual scholars, academics, investigative reporters that are doing phenomenal coverage or read entire articles written on investigative reporting. It's just something that I never do. I only read the headline and then see reporting from the ground. That's pretty funny. I have reported from the ground when it comes to the UCLA encampments. Um, the very same person who's a uh, idiotic drama farming YouTube video that you're reiterating personally admitted that he was simply joking when he said reporting from the ground and also Twitter. There you go. The NPCs, baby. Straight up NPC, mother. Just not even saying anything. Just saying Twitter. <laughs> Your arguments are literally devolving. Right in front of our eyes. Devolving right in front of our eyes. Once again. Oh, yeah. Maybe I should go and report from the ground. Maybe I should go to Nazi Germany and uh, have the Nazi have the Nazi show me a concentration camp and be like, oh, things are really good here. And maybe some select Jews that the Nazis have decided I can interview or whatever anyway you absolutely can enter israel by the way <laughs> yeah yeah no totally dude let me just go there right now yeah please come to israel we will treat you very well i promise i i mean i can i can go to israel i <laughs> i don't know if i could leave but even beyond that um even beyond that do i want to go to israel is another question it's like again during world war ii going to nazi germany and uh, hearing what the Nazis have to say during World War II about the camps that they had. He's like, come on, pull a Red Cross, bro. Pull a Red Cross. What, what are you doing? <laughs> go to the one camp that they have. <laughs> pull a Red Cross. It's chill. Go through 12 checkpoints to go on Elon Levy's podcast. Yeah, it'll be sick. You have to read the very bottom of the New York Times investigation in the Israel Torture Center to find the most horrifying discoveries, including systemic and with a metal rod. <laughs> Yeah, guided tour of Auschwitz in 1944. Come on, dude. It, it'll be sick. Then your opinion will change on Israel. <laughs> you understand me? <laughs> By force, maybe. Red Cross went to the concentration camps and found it acceptable. Yeah, no shit. That's, what, that's the argument. That is directly what I was <laughs> joking about. Then maybe you can actually do on the ground reporting from people who leave the conflict. You don't need to go through checkpoints because you don't live in the territory that isn't in Israel's jurisdiction. Yeah, territory that isn't in Israel's jurisdiction is a wonderful way to describe the West Bank. It isn't, but that hasn't stopped Israel from occupying it with a military force. <laughs> territory, more like territory. Dude, look at the front page of the New York Times. This is who we are inviting to speak at the Congress. 40 years on, Biden seeks to echo Reagan's legacy of American leadership. That's awesome. Zelensky shares an emotional moment with a U.S. veteran. <laughs> Luckily, Zelensky is sharing a moment with a good veteran of World War II this time, okay? And not a bad veteran of World War II <laughs> like when he was in Canada. He got it right this time. Okay, listen. Yeah, why are you chatting with the Houthis instead of Tel Aviv DJs and pizza shop owners? As an Israeli, your accent is on point. Thank you. Israeli strike kills dozens of school complex where civilians sought shelter. Mama, mama, Israeli strike sets off chaos at Gaza Hospital. The aftermath of an Israeli strike that killed dozens of the school complex in central Gaza where thousands of Palestinians were sheltering. And who are we? Who are we? <laughs> who are we welcoming into American Congress with open arms? Oh, yeah, that's right. The guy who's, uh, 
responsible for these atrocities. America invites Adolf Hitler to speak at Congress. He has many things, many sites to show us. Wait, what? Mitch McConnell, we cannot repeat the mistakes of the 1930s. Wait, what? Oh, he must be talking about Russia, right? When he says that, when he says that, bro, when Mitch McConnell says we must not repeat the mistakes of the 1930s, he means we have to align with the good guys this time and not the bad guys in the USSR. <laughs> He's like, we made, a, we made a big mistake in the 1930s when the business plot failed. Okay. <laughs> FDR was a communist and a pussy. <laughs> he should have done what is necessary for American interests, which is align with the good guys and not the bad guys. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Of course, America's heard much less from our disgrace isolationist after the attack on Pearl Harbor. No, he's just saying like America needs to fight Russia directly, I assume. Germany's not a close ally and trading partner, but it was caught flat-footed by the rise of the new axis of authoritarians made up of Russia, China, North Korea, and Iran. So too were the advanced European powers who once united to defeat the Nazis. We are the Nazis, bro. What are you saying? For a second, the way that this article is headlined, you might think there is a growing fascist momentum in this country, which there is. That's not what Mitch McConnell is talking about. Because that would be shitting on his own constituents. Not that he's running for re-election, but it doesn't matter. Here at home, we face problems of our own. Some vocal corners of the American right are trying to resurrect the discredited brand of pre-war isolationism and deny the basic value of allegiance systems that is kept to post-war peace. This dangerous proposition rivals the American left's long-standing allergy to military spending and its potential to make America less safe. It should not take another catastrophic attack like Pearl Harbor to wake today's isolationists from the delusion that regional conflicts have no consequence for the world's most powerful and prosperous nation. With global powers comes global interests and global responsibilities. Yeah, he's saying... Don't be isolationist. Attack now. It's time for a three-front war, okay? He's saying it's time for a three-front war with the axis of evil. New York Times, Nevada Republican County clerk of 20 years recalled by Trump or petition. Who's he even talking about? Even liberals are pro-military industrial complex? Yeah, I don't even know who he's referencing here because, like, the Democratic Party as it stands is, like, super pro-Israel, just as pro-Israel as the Republican Party is. For that dumb D chatter, foreign nationals can touristic touristically enter the West Bank. However, if you are associated with anti-Israel orgs or positions, they'll often deny you entry to the West Bank or Israel in general. Most famous case of this is when they blocked Chomsky from giving a lecture at Berzait University. No doubt Hassan is on at least a few of Israel's lists. I mean, I am uh, anti-Semite of the week on stopantisemitism.org. So yeah, where is, the, where is that chatter? He was like, come to Israel. It's so beautiful here. You will see the conflict from my eyes. Yeah. I should go to the old city so I can get my pushed in by some of the most inbred fundamentalist hicks as an israeli your accent is not on point you know we have the power of social media and the internet right like i listen to daniel hagari on a daily basis what do you mean my israeli accent is not on point because of hostile attacks and defensive necessity there are no checkpoints between israeli cities no reports about the missiles launched from these same sites towards cities oh no dude Oh no, some bathtub rockets were quickly intercepted by my tax dollars. Listen, brother, if you're Israeli, you should be kissing my feet every goddamn day, okay? Every goddamn day. My tax dollars is literally defending your nation state and allowing you to keep doing apartheid, but it's not an apartheid. Why would you say this? It is a security necessity. They're all babies. To the time without OVO, can you link any source about it not about not being allowed to enter Israel? You are a Twitch streamer. <sighs> Noam Chomsky denied entry into the West Bank. You could have just Googled it. Listening to an Israeli speaker does not make your weird French accent anywhere close to the Israeli accent. I I really, really, really want to hear what you sound like. Because <laughs> there's only two different versions of this, okay? Either you just sound like me, okay? Oh, West Bank in Israel is very different. Oh, got it. There's two different wor versions of this. Either you're going to sound like me, okay? Or you're going to sound like, uh, this, is a, this is the accent. The West Bank accent sounds like a guy from Brooklyn. No, he's not talking about the West Bank accent. He's saying 
Oh, I didn't mean uh, you couldn't go into the West Bank. I just meant that you couldn't go into Israel. Also, no, it doesn't sound like the French accent. Why? Why would it be different? That's your argument. You got it. You can enter Israel. What's more to say? Brother, I am not going to Nazi Germany, okay? I hope you understand this. And I mean this with all sincerity and with all disrespect. I have, uh, I've met wonderful people online that live in Israel right now. Okay. They're great. Uh, and, and it would be, it would be wonderful to go visit them one day when Israel and Palestinians can, you know, live side by side in harmony under a secular solitary nation state for, with equal rights for all citizens. Okay. That does not mean you can't, you can't say you can't come to Israel when you can brother. I'm not going to Israel so you can execute me okay stop demanding that i go to israel stop demanding that i go to nazi germany <laughs> what yes it does don't say you can't come you can come yeah when it's israel's not an ethno state maybe i'll feel a little bit more secure as an outspoken critic of the ethno state yeah this is like a gray wolf trying to get you to go to turkey yeah come come baby <laughs> <laughs> You keep saying I should go to Israel. It's going to make me, it's going to start making me feel a little less secure. Okay. <laughs> He's like, you sound like a chatter. That's like, Hey, uh, are you going to happen to be at this uh, specific location for a March? Please. I would like to find out. My claim was you can come if you want to. You said you can't cause a streamer can't go into the West bank. Those are different points. No, I have no assurances of being able to be safe and secure. If I were to ever go to Israel, regardless and why the f would I just go to Israel? Of course, I would like to go to the West Bank and see the occupied territory, except that doesn't matter to you. You're just trying to have a semantics argument while simultaneously repeating that I should go to Israel and that no harm will come to me. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, uh, you want to do on the ground reporting? Come to Israel, please. Please come to Israel. Professor Norman Finkelstein, an American Jewish scholar known for his trenchant criticism of Israeli policy, was detained and interrogated by Israel's security forces, Shimbet, for 24 hours at Tel Aviv's Ben Gurion airport, denied entry into Israel and deported back to Amsterdam, where he had been lecturing. <laughs> please come to Israel. <laughs> it's like, dude, this, this literally, this straight up is identical this straight up is identical to like telling a dude who's not like a black American, but let's say they're, they're like half black from Europe being like, Hey, why don't you go to, you know, why don't you go to the Jim Crow South and, and check it out? <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'm wearing a clan robe while I say that, but like, why don't you do that? Why don't you just go? You'll be fine. Just feel it out. Like, no, I'm good, man. I think I'm good. Can you go anywhere you want in America? Fill the paperwork, do the necessary checks. Just like you can't go anywhere that isn't safe without permission. Oh, what happened? So now you're saying you may <laughs> before you were saying, before you were saying, no, everyone is welcome in Israel. Now you're like, oh, well, you know, the necessary permissions might not be there. What happened? Uh, come on, bro. Come to Israel. It's fine. <laughs> we love guys named Hassan. <laughs> We are big fans. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Nothing bad will happen to you. <laughs> I <laughs> This brief back and forth has convinced me further that I definitely <laughs> do not feel <laughs> more safe now. Yeah, everyone is welcome in Israel. Not everyone is welcome in the West Bank for security purposes. Oh, okay. Except for Norm Finkelstein, who was apparently not welcome in Israel either for security purposes. Just say you don't want to go to Israel because Tel Aviv is too gay for your faux ass. Yeah. Listen, listen. There's a valid reason. There's a valid reason why Norm Finkelstein was not allowed into Israel. By the way, both of those people that Israel detained and refused entry both into the West Bank and also into Israel are Jewish people. That's the other side of the story. Like, I, I feel like that complicates things even further. If outspoken anti-zionist american jews are being held up i feel like a turkish american muslim outspoken anti-zionist is probably going to have even less of a good time <laughs> you know what i mean like bro i've seen what israel does to palestinian citizens of israel okay get the 
out of here. <laughs> He's like, come, please come to Israel. Isn't it odd that Cuxton is granted security clearance to the West Bank? Surely has nothing to do with his opinions or rhetoric. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's not. What? I swear, die and be put in a joint. The Israeli will smoke you like there is no tomorrow. Come to Israel. I don't think it's the same chatter. The Israeli government has cited security concerns and Finkelstein's alleged support for Hezbollah, a Lebanese militant group that Israel considers a terrorist organization, has reasons for his ban. Oh, okay. In 2008, he was denied entry to Israel and detained at Ben Gurion Airport for several hours before being deported. The official reason given was that he posed a security threat. Did you read anything about him or did you read a headline again? Brother, considering that I was uh, literally yesterday showing speeches from Hassan Nasrallah, it seems to me like I would probably get a similar, if not worse, welcome. Than Norm Finkelstein for the security concerns that you just mentioned. This is the funniest part about ultra Zionists is that he thinks this is a valid argument. To the rest of the world, this is not a valid argument. This only is a valid argument in the hug box that you have cultivated for yourself online. So when you present this as a valid argument, Okay, well, just a regular Zionist, ultra Zionist, doesn't matter. Ultra nationalist, regardless. Zionism is a fascist ideology. You are a fascist. Um, this, is the, this is the problem. You think that this is a valid reason. I do not. I think this is a ridiculous reason to deny entry into, uh, to deny entry to an academic into Israel. Ironic because I would, under similar circumstances, be denied entry into Israel regardless, proving my point you're literally a twitch streamer you're not a political person you'd be fine in israel yeah i'd be fine in israel because at the top of the hour there would be no three minute ad break because i'd be f jailed okay there'd be no stream there would be no more streaming there would be no more three minute ad breaks at the top of the hour wait did this chatter seriously do, this? do you know who norm finkelstein is when they're the ones who just learned about him yes what security concerns was chomsky about to do a suicide vest building workshop at berzy yes Noam Chomsky, who was like 98 at the time, 10 years ago, 14 years ago, presented a genuine security threat. You are just using Israel's past statements and actions to justify your beliefs about what they would say and do to you? Yeah, I know. Which is pretty crazy of me to do. Palestinian citizen of Israel. I mean, this we covered this already. This is a this is a person living in Israel proper. Hassan will 100% get detained at the airport if he tries to go to Israel. I'm willing to bet money on that. People have been turned back for less. And Hassan is like enemy number four among the Zionist freaks. His name is on all the Zionist websites. Yeah. I can't believe that guy tried to for this entire time. For throughout the, the past 30 minutes, unironically try to be like, come to Israel, you won't die. I promise. Come to Israel. You will not, you will be enter, you will be allowed to enter the country. Come to Israel. It's super chill. As though, even if it was true, which it isn't, and I did go to Israel, what the fuck would I see there? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you think my opinion would change? So he consided to your points, you'd be locked up for security concerns, moving the goalposts like a loser. Exactly. Yeah, they, I think they forgot that they wrote my uncle's name on a missile and launched it into Gaza. <laughs> Weird tourism motto. You will not die. We promise. To be fair, he said you couldn't come to Israel. He didn't state if you could leave or not. That is true. He never said I'd be able to leave. Or he never said I, I would be detained and then deported back. <laughs> He's like, bro, once you get a taste of this falafel, okay, once you go to one of our 11 different uh, restaurants called Pizza Party, okay, and you listen to the worst techno music you've ever heard, you will, your mind will expand dramatically. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, you will be like, damn, dude, this genocide shit, eh, it ain't nothing to me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> have you ever had <laughs> Sabra Hummus? <laughs> uh, you'll be, even though you're an American? Well, I don't know. I mean, considering that an American citizen was uh, sniped in the West Bank very famously by the Israeli uh, occupying force and then lied about, you know, I don't think being an American saves you in that situation. <laughs> I think it's pretty funny that this chatter, I, I, I want to believe that he legitimately thinks that I would not, uh, I, I, I would be perfectly fine traveling to Israel. Like in his mind, this is like all new information for him. He's like, what? He's going to be an anti-Zionist now. <laughs>
As a Palestinian American, I've had multiple family members denied entry when landing in Israel at the Ben Gurion Airport and forced go to go back to America. Also, when it was my first time visiting my family in the West Bank at 16 with my siblings, the IDF got there right after and drove around and sprayed tear gas all over my family's village. We were standing by my grandma. Yeah, but you're Palestinian, so you're not a human in the eyes of that Israeli dude who's like, come to Israel. It's a... Sorry, he would say, um, you are a, um, how you say, a security concern. 